We got Rich Homie Kwon on the show. New music dropping tomorrow. Can't wait to get into it. All Things Atlanta next. Woo! Welcome back to the Up and Adam show. Let's do it. We've got a very special guest. He's an award-winning rapper, an Atlanta native, creator of a new label, What? Taken over with Rich Homie Entertainment. He's got a revamp album, Family Moolah Reloaded, dropping tomorrow. The Adlib King, Rich Homie Kwan, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. How you feeling? I'm good, I'm good. Congratulations. How are you feeling? You have new music tomorrow. Kwan, what are we getting? And congrats on the release. Uh, what are you getting from the new music and uh, a lot of storytelling? Uh, more ad libs from the ad lib king, of course. Yes. Um, me still feeling some type of way about a whole lot of new things, new stories. Um, and basically, corny bobbing on a Atlanta down south 808 hard hit instrumentals. Okay, we love that. I know you know you are Atlanta. You are Atlanta, and I know, I know. Quan, that you are, you bleed Falcons, but why do I keep seeing interviews where you are repping or talking about your love for the Chiefs? Are you a Chiefs fan? What's up? Oh, I love the Chiefs. I love the Chiefs. See, I'm a fan of winners. I know I'm, 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 uh, I'm from Atlanta, so like you know, Atlanta's just sent me a lot of Falcons to death. But we don't be winning like that. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? We'll be winning like that. And them boys know I love them. I was just at the soccer game a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Kyle Pitts is my man. Uh, Cody uh, Patterson. Nice. Uh, so yeah, like, you know, yeah, Yeah, so I, I love the Falcons. But the Chiefs are just something different, man, especially when they get in playoff mode. So, you know, the Chiefs and the Warriors, they're just, they're just different when the playoffs come. Who's your favorite you know Chief? Uh, who's my favorite Chief? Uh-huh. Uh, Mahomes? Of course, everybody loves Pat Mahomes. Um, like number 17, uh, my, uh, what's his McCall name? Hardman, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's my dog right there. He's got like Georgia like, boy. Yeah, see, you see, you see, you see the relation? Yeah. That's so, it's, so that's yeah. okay. As long as he's from, from way of Georgia to the Chiefs, it all makes sense and nobody yeah, no. in Atlanta so, so it can makes be sense mad at why you. I rep them the way I, it makes sense <laughs> the way I rep them why I do. It's true. Now, we've seen a bunch of NFL players over the years yeah. put out their own rap albums. Yes, ma'am. Le'Veon Bell. We saw Antonio Brown, Melvin Ingram. How yeah. do you feel about players doing that? Be honest. Um, be honest, I think it's dope. Uh, you know what I mean? I don't think uh, the people, the fans, take it as serious because they're already, quote, unquote, solidified. But I've heard some talented athletes, artists, like uh, Dame Lillard, for example. Dope bar. Okay. Dame can really spit. Um, even like the song, I think yesterday they was playing, I saw on Instagram, um, KD and LeBron had a song. And I mean, I thought KD bars, I feel like KD could rap if he was to pursue that. You know what I'm saying? LeBron bars felt like a uh, more like old school Run DMC. But I felt like KD was on some, you know what I'm saying? He could hang, you know what I mean? So I don't have nothing against you. I don't have nothing against it at all. I think it's dope. But, like, uh, but you're so, not going out there trying to route fools up, or you're not going out there trying to pretend that you can be an NFL player. It doesn't bother you at all. Like, what, you think it's so easy, LeBron? You can just come in here and just, you know, this, this takes a lot of work to be the ad-lib king. Yes, it does. It does. Um, and I, uh, like I say, of course, I'm not trying to go out there and run no routes or shoot mm -hmm. any walls. Mm -mm. But I think um, it's very rarely for, it's very rare that you just see an athlete just break out for music. Only because, like, I, some of them think it's so easy and it's so much little yeah. stuff that we have to do. There's so many tiny things we have to do. Interviews, follow up on relationships and with them guys being in the gym and working on the, you know, the crowd. There's no, there's no off days in music, just like there's no off days in sports. So it's, it's kind of hard to try to juggle the two. Yeah. Now, Atlanta's obviously home to so many talented R&B, hip hop, rapper, artists over the years. And you yourself, one of the greats from Atlanta. Now in sports yes. where I work, we love lists. We love <laughs> top five quarterbacks, top five teams, yeah. top five, you know. I know yes. this is tough, but I want to hear your top five artists from Atlanta ever. Top five from Atlanta ever. That's, a, that, that's crazy. Like, nobody's ever, ever asked me that. What? I would give myself number five, and this is no particular list, but I would definitely include myself in there. Like, top five ever. Uh, we got to throw T.I. in there. So that's two. Gucci Man. I would definitely say Future. Wow. Um, Outcast. 
Okay, Outcast. No, no. Okay, yet. Outcast is two. Like that's it, one. That's one. It's one. Is that? Yeah. So that's my five. Outcast. So that's yeah. five. No, Young Jeezy. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I just knew. I knew. Uh, I was talking in the control room before the show. I go. He's gonna put himself first. No, no, like, no, no question. I would never put myself not first. first. I would but, never put myself yeah. first. And I, I usually don't even put myself on the list, but like uh, over all time, I gotta be on it. Right? Yeah, and, you, sh and you should be. And you got new music dropping tomorrow. New Family music and Lula. Friday. Reloaded. Yes. Uh, your love for Atlanta, while we're talking about it, I know that it runs so deep, and the music world continues to mourn the death of Takeoff. And I'm so, so sorry yeah. for your loss. Uh, what was it like to have all of Atlanta come together like that? It was amazing to have Atlanta to come like that for takeoff loss. It was, but it was sad that we had to come together in that type of situation. I wish we can come together without it having to be a deal. You know, I wish we can come together just because it's Wednesday. You know, and I, um, that definitely uh, not kind of hard, but it hit me hard mm -hmm. only because like uh, takeoff, the Migos, our career started like at the same time. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting, I remember sitting um, in Gucci's man studio on the couch before any of us have a dollar sign name, before any of us know anything about an entertainment lawyer or just the music business in general. So that one hit a little hard. Like that one hit a little. Like it, it hit me hard. What was the one hard. moment from the memorial that sort of stayed with you or stood out to you? Um, I would definitely say when Offset spoke. Offset's, uh, Offset's speech, it was very emotional. And you could tell it was heartfelt. Mm. It was heartfelt. It was heartfelt. It was nice though, from Justin Bieber singing. Mm -hmm. um, and like, it was pandemonium. Like, he waited probably like three minutes before he even saw him, like a Michael Jackson moment. And with them doing it at the, uh, the State Farm Arena, I think that was dope to send him up out of here the right way, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. rest in peace to take off. Of course, and you, I, bet, I bet it gave you a lot of perspective. You're mentioning you, you came up with Migos while you don't even know what an entertainment lawyer was, and now I'm yes. looking at you, and you recently became an independent artist. Whole, yeah. like, you are now your own boss. You started your own label, Rich Homie Entertainment. That's the dream. Yes, yeah, it's a dream, but it comes with a lot of work, too. And at the end of the day, like, it's something I've always wanted, but with me being in the game for 10 years, I've uh, been through a lot of adversity. I've learned a lot. I've definitely seen every side of the sword, but the independent side of the sword. So it was something new for me. I was excited to take it, and I feel like I've yet to scratch the surface. And this is my time to, you know, really get my flowers and really get what's yeah. rightfully due to me if I do it the right way. It's really true, and I know that, you know, you're not just an inspiration in that way in the musical community. I looked it up because when I saw that, there are 17 players acting independently, and there are just 17 as their own agents. Lamar Jackson, of course, a huge yeah. one. He's due. He wants his contract. So what yeah. you're doing is inspiring other people to sort of take things into their own hands. But you inspire, yeah. you, inspire you know, lots of athletes. Of course, people are... Uh, singing and having you, you know, you in their ear AirPods for the game. Uh, I thought it was very cool. You're featured on a YG song, uh, of yeah. course, that Deion Sanders has since made his anthem down at Jackson yeah. State. What is that like to you to see what Prime is doing? Oh, uh, man, it's crazy to see what Prime is doing, especially for, like, Prime. And this before he's coached Prime, so, you know, uh, this is more Deion uh, Prime time. You know what I'm saying? Prime time. Uh, I have a picture painted of him in my house like this before. Like It was a big inspiration as far as me playing sports. Wow. Growing up, I played baseball and and football because of Prime. You know, so uh, he was a big inspiration to me. But what he's doing for uh, HBCUs, I think it's truly, truly uh, in inspirational, motivational. And, like, it took a leap of faith to do that. So like it just showed me like he's fearless. He's fearless. He's he still motivated me off the field. So I man, I love Coach Prime. I'm, I've yet to meet him. I've yet to meet him. Coach Prime, we got to make that happen, man. You gotta uh, with that being the song, Coach Prime. This is we told me, uh, you know, reaching out, man. Let, let's walk out to the real theme song, man. You know, my head, man. Let's do it the right way, coach. Yeah, I have, can't believe you've never met him. That's wild. But there's so much mutual respect. I remember back in 2013 that Michigan State team.
That chant, yeah. you, were, you were at the Rose Bowl, you're cheering them on, you're celebrating in the locker room, they adopted your song. That must feel yeah. so cool to have a team carry that with you, and, uh, and there's so much mutual respect there. Now, give me really quickly the one song off of Family Moolah Reloaded, which is out tomorrow, new music yeah. uh, from Rich Homie Quant. Give me the one song the Chiefs should adopt from that album, from the new music, for their 2022 Super Bowl run. I would say, you too. I would either say Legacy, or spin, and I say legacy because what they're creating right now, it's almost like a whole new, like, you know, back in the day, like, the Chiefs. Like, I haven't looked at the Chiefs since they had, like, Dante Hall yeah. uh, uh, returning, you know what I'm saying? Throw the X up, uh, Dante Hall. So it's almost like they're creating a new legacy yeah. down there. And the other song I would definitely say is spin, because every time they pull up on it, they're trying to spin the block on whoever team they play. Shout out to Andy Reid. The offense, a guru, you know what I'm saying? Definitely shout out to Andy Reeves, man. Keep calling them plays. I just pray that everybody stays healthy. That's, you're amazing. Congrats on the new music. Congrats on the label, being an independent artist, living the dream. Uh, and you have so much perspective, and we just appreciate you stopping yeah. by. Congrats. Everybody, check out the new music, uh, the album Family and Moolah Reloaded, out, out tomorrow. Rich Homie Kwan, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good to see you and to meet you. We got to get that. He's never met Prime. We got to get, we got to make that happen. Uh, not we, I mean, I have no pull. I don't. <laughs>